April wrap up. So in April, I read about nine books. There were some novellas, we'll talk. I'm not trying to read the most amount of books each month. It's just that I've really taken a pause from like the reading world for like four to five years. Four to five, not 45, I'm not 45 years old. So I feel like really behind on a lot of newer books or there's books that I've been wanting to read and so I'm trying to catch up on so many and I know I'll never catch up on all of them but that's why I got a lot of books in each wrap up. The first book I read this month was released in March. It's a new YA release of a sort of a trilogy and that is Rebel of the Sands by Alwyn Hamilton. It is the start of a trilogy set in the desert and it follows Amani and Jin as they go through on a desert adventure together with magic and mythological beings and guns and sand. It's a very solid fantasy adventure, very well grounded, very good. I gave it 4 out of 5 stars and I'm really looking forward to this continuing series. I did a full video review of this so you should check it out. Thanks. For all the sands I read as a physical copy from my library, I might buy the full trilogy once it continues. This second book is also the start of a new YA trilogy that was released in March 2016, and that is <sighs> Lady Midnight by Cassandra Clare. This book is so good. I marathoned it in like three and a half days when like the other Cassandra Clare books all took me like a month to get through each just about, and I just with so many ups and downs and feelings, and I have filmed a video review of this, but I have like an hour of footage. I had like 40 minutes for like my siren spoilery discussion video, and I somehow turned that down to 12, so I don't know how I'm gonna turn 50 minutes into anything comprehensible, but we're gonna work on that. So, it will be linked below when I'm done with it. I gave it five out of five stars. It was insane. I had a lot of doubts, and I was so wrong. This book follows two parabatai in Los Angeles who are following mythical occult murders that are going on that are affecting both humans and fairies. Oh, and you also need to read all of The Mortal Instruments, The Infernal Devices, Tales from Shadowhunter Academy, and it wouldn't hurt to read some of the Bane Chronicles, but you don't have to. But having a knowledge of it and keeping like the Shadowhunters wiki a page open is really helpful while writing this book to keep track of everyone. Lady Midnight I read as a physical copy from my library, which is why I read it so quickly because I needed to return it and I knew a lot of people had it on hold. I do want to buy this entire trilogy. I don't know if I'm going to wait until there's like a box set of them or if I'm gonna buy them one by one, but I don't need to reread this book right now. Those characters have done a lot of things to me and I'm not ready to forget them just yet. The next book I read is a popular adult book that is soon to be adapted into a movie. You've probably seen the trailer and that is me Before You by Jojo Mayes. When I first saw the trailer, I watched it without audio because I don't know what was happening, but I was somewhere where I couldn't have audio on. So I'm watching the trailer and I'm like, oh my gosh, Amelia Clark from Game of Thrones, yes please. And then I saw Sam Claflin from Hunger Games and I'm like, yes please, yes please. So I knew there was like a sad element to the book and I'm sure you know as well. If you've watched the trailer, that sets the tone. This book made me feel lots of things and I just need to talk them out and I can't do about a full video to it because I, I, just, I just can't, I can't do it, I can't do it. Nope, I gave it four to five stars. Good beginning, I didn't like the conclusion but that was just me. And now we're gonna do spoilers so when I put my hand down, spoilers will be gone and I'll move on to the next book. Okay, typically when I read a book, I can put aside while reading it my own personal beliefs and things just to kind of like buy into that book world just while I'm reading it and then be critical after the fact. With this one, I couldn't do that. My morals are a strong part of me and I can't just, just abscond from them. My religion is very important to me. I never talk about it on this channel, so we're going to start talking about it on my channel. I'm a Catholic. I'm pro-life. I don't believe in euthanasia and assisted suicide and dignitas. So the fact that Will goes through with it in the end. I understand the point that that's the only choice he can make, but not making that choice is also a choice. I know that was the only thing he could do in that moment that he thought he could, but there's always hope, and I felt like this just had a really bad message. I'm not gonna read the sequel. The beginning was so beautiful with them learning from each other, and I didn't anticipate him getting better or anything like that. Like, I didn't want an idolized version. I understand it kind of ended happy because he gave Louisa everything that she needed and the money to go and be her own person. I just... I can't talk through it because I'm just having a lot of things and I just can't support the message of this book and how it was portrayed and I feel like a lot of people are gonna go see the movie and be disappointed and not know what they're gonna get when they go into it and I just okay spoilers are over I read that as an ebook so yeah that's that's the end of that the fourth book I read is the start of an adult trilogy that has very mature elements you should be like 16 or up maybe a little older depending on like your temperament before reading this book series. And that is Captive Prince by C.S. Picot. This book is kind of following a Greek-like country who is complete rivals with a kind of like a French-like country. Very, very like ancient Greece, like Odysseus, Oedipus Rex feels, kind of like that. The bastard brother betrays the true heir to the crown and sends him off as a pleasure slave to their rival country to be at the whims of the 
bar the rival prince. They're both barbarians. Everyone in this book is a barbarian. So I suspended my judgment while reading this book. It just was like a very good fluff read. A lot of trigger warnings for abuse and rape and violence for a mature audience. I do have plans to finish the trilogy just to kind of feel it all out. I don't know if I really like it. I gave it three stars. It's just nice to like break from my brain from everything I usually read that makes me think a lot more and have emotional feelings. And this is just kind of tame i can't say it's tame it's not tame at all like just be aware so i just want to see how it turns out so i'll get into book two maybe there's some redemption for these characters all right the fifth books i read this month were novellas that were based off of a popular series that just ended in april and that is and that is The Crown and the Arrow and The Moth and the Flame. Novella is based off of The Wrath and the Dawn slash The Rose and the Dagger by Renee Audie. The Crown and the Arrow, it was very short. It was free on Barnes & Noble Nook. So I was like, yes, it's 12 pages and it just is uh, a scene from The Wrath and the Dawn from Khalid's point of view. The Moth and the Flame was like, I think like $1.99 on most like ebook websites, whatever. And that follows Despina and Jalal's relationship and they're really cute and I really liked it. And I gave that one five out of five stars. The Crown of the Arrow gave four out of five stars because I just wanted more from that. I understand it was kind of like a writing experiment for Renee Audier, but like I wanted some more, okay? The sixth book is a novella bind up based off of a series that I I'm currently in the middle of the fifth book and it comes out in September and that is <sighs> The Assassin's Blade by Sarah J Mass. I read it on Scribd. I got that as a recurring service so you can read three ebooks and listen to one audiobook each month. I wish I had read this before Crown of Midnight. I'm glad to read it now though before continuing with Air of Fire and Queen of Shadows because I feel like each two kind of correlate more from what I understand of the series. I plan to buy it one day, but I'm in no rush. If I buy any of the books in the series first, it'd probably be Air of Fire or Queen of Shadows, so that way I can read them at my own pace. If you want to start the Throne of Glass series, I don't think you should start with the Assassin's Blade. That's what's recommended and that's what the number order is, but you won't feel as emotionally tied to these characters. Reading those first two books before the Assassin's Blade bind up made them a lot more meaningful. Oh, and I gave it five out of five stars. So overall, number seven, I listened to as an audiobook and it is a nonfiction adult book by a popular comedian that you've probably seen on a sitcom that ended last year. And that is Modern Romance by Aziz Ansari. I listened to this on Scribd. It's just a six hour audiobook and it's read by him, kind of humor mixed with actual information about how people relate and connect in such a good digital world. And it just was like really nice six hours spent it was quick, I was cleaning my room, I was organizing stuff, and I listened to it, and it just was like, made the time go by a lot faster. If you have any other recommendations of audiobooks on Scribd that I should check out, let me know below. Thank you. And I gave it five out of five stars. The eighth book I read in April is one of the bazillion books that came out on May 3rd. I received it as an ARC from Fierce Reads, and that is... Square Root of Summer by Harriet Ruder Hapgood. This book follows Gotti, a 17-year-old UK physics whiz who ends up falling through like these wormholes in alternate universes the summer after both her grandfather dies and she has her secret breakup with her secret boyfriend. But it's the summer that her best friend returns after all these years and it's really cool how all the different timelines of herself come together. This is the type of time travel I like where you time travel back to your own life and relive moments. I gave this 3.5 stars. So I did receive this as a free ARC giveaway. Like I entered a sweepstakes. All opinions are my own of this book. I really enjoyed like physics and calculus and math in high school. So this kind of brought me back to that. The parts were a little complicated. It was a good debut novel, but maybe not the best debut novel out there ever. But I'm really interested to see where she writes from here. Cause I feel like this story could have been a little bit better had Harriet Reader Hapgood waited till her second or third novel to better flesh out her writing style. My personal opinion, I'm just an internet blogger, like take everything I say with a grain of salt. So it's kind of like a contemporary sci-fi fantasy romance, light on the sci-fi, like the wormholes just appear. There's not really much math you have to understand, it's just more of a lots of dates, lots of dates of keeping track of things. The ninth book I technically finished on May 1st, but if I wait a month to talk about this book, I will go insane. This book is a new adult reimagining of a very classic book that I very, very much love if you remember my favorite books, and it came out in April. Jane Steele by Lindsay Fay. This book is so good. Five out of five stars. I want to do a review of this book, but I'm going to wait until I can compare it to Jane Eyre, and it's so cool, and it's so good, and I love this book a lot. I, I can't. I can't even. Jane Steele, instead of just becoming a governess and then wandering on the moors, she becomes a governess and a murderess. And it also involves the Sikh wars from the Punjabi. And so there's a lot of like Middle Eastern culture drawn into it. So there's a big weird mix of things happening in 
Victorian England in this book, but it's so beautiful. It's so delicious. It's so wonderful. I'm like, wait, we need to count this in my April wrap up because it matters this much. I just need to talk about it while holding this book and just hugging it because it's so good. So good. This has been my April wrap up. It's been a very long video. I have a lot of editing to do. Yay! Well, my name is Laura. This has been Bookies and Cookies. I post videos every few days because I'm reworking my upload schedule and I will make sure to put in the about page when my upload schedule will be because I keep changing it up. I love you guys so much. I hope you never forget it. And remember quality over quantity when choosing your books. Thanks guys. Yeah. My brain, I'm tired. I only got like four hours of sleep. The Crown came out today, yay! I'm so tired.